Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Don't forget our Palestinian brothers and sisters. I'm going to leave a link in the description for a reliable charity for you to donate. Richard Dawkins, a very prominent atheist and might I add very old. In fact, I'm surprised that the guy is still alive and still recycling some of those old prehistoric fossilized arguments that have been long refuted and long debunked. But this time he was back on the Piers Morgan show talking about his last ever tour. Frankly, I don't blame you, son. I don't blame you. I think Piers Morgan's a fool. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, whoa. I didn't expect to be agreeing with Dawkins so early on. I think not only would I agree with you, so would most of the nation. I do not think you're a fool, no. Thank you. Well, I would hope not because you're back on the program. Well, so much for standing your ground. It only took a few words from Piers Morgan and they weren't even harsh words. Not a good start, I must say. I'm trying to tell you what a physicist would say first of all. They would say that you cannot use the word before for the Big Bang. Time began at the Big Bang. There was no before before the Big Bang. I know it's contrary to common sense. Hmm. Physicists don't necessarily deal with common sense. What's really strange here is he tells us to appeal to the physicists and then rather than convincing us and telling us that you look they got their stuff together mate yeah everything's working up there you can trust them he admits that it goes against common sense and they don't deal with common sense hang on a minute what's the reason why you reject god again oh it goes against common sense but you accept what some quantum quack says who you know goes against common sense and we know science by its nature is bound to change it relies significantly upon something called induction which means our limited observations the more observations that come in the more likely we are to change our theory and physics like all of science only tells us the how not the why and nor does it claim to. It doesn't claim to deal with the metaphysical questions of our existence. Why burden it more than it can handle? But doesn't code have to have a coder? No, of course it doesn't. Uh, coder arises um, spontaneously at the origin of life, something very, very simple probably. Then you have the possibility of yeah. mutation, which is the mistaken encoding. Yeah, where does it come from? It comes from a random accident in chemistry at some time around 3.8 to 4 billion years ago. You're going into logic there mate, yeah? When you were asked about other questions you said yo it's not my field. Why don't you say the same over here mate? Code is the direct effect of a coder which is the cause. In fact I challenge you to ask any coder to suggest any line of code that was helpful and useful that just came by itself. And that's the reason why there is a career in coding. Otherwise, why on earth would businesses be spending millions on getting good coders to help with lining their pockets even more? If code could just spontaneously come into existence, why on earth would they be so dumb to hire all of these coders. And if I continue that line of logic, if code cannot exist without a coder, then how can this world operate without an operator? In fact, just listening to the mental gymnastics that these atheists do is quite hilarious, yeah? Let's look at the first word that he used, spontaneous. In other words, it happened by itself as if through magic. But he's not going to say that spontaneous sounds more academic. Then we go to mistake. Uh, yeah, we don't know why it happened, mate. And it makes us look quite stupid because we're taking millions of funding. So we're just going to use the word mistake, mate, because that lays the blame on good old fashioned stupid nature. Yeah, it does mistakes. Yeah, that's right. yeah, it's done a mistake. And as a result of that mistake, we have everything that we see around us, mate. Yeah, the rivers, the oceans, the trees, the mountains, and all of the varieties of birds and fish and insects that we see, mate. Yeah, mistake. That's what it was. And I'm sticking with that. Then he says accident. In other words, it happened by itself. Because that's what people do when they go into these art galleries. They're like, oh mate, this is absolutely ruddy fantastic. How many millions of years did this uh, canvas take? What do you mean, leave the art gallery? What do you mean you're calling security? These guys don't understand science. <laughs> 
we got to call the physicists to these guys, yeah? <laughs> have you thought about what happens when, when your life ends? Well, I'm 83. Um, have I thought about what happens? Yeah. Well, of course, I die. Yeah. Um, what do you think happens? I think I get buried or cremated. And I that's think there's it. nothing after that. I think it's exactly like, of course, how could it not be? I mean, we, you have a brain which decays. How could, how could there be anything other than, than, than that? There's just nothing, just like there was before you were born. Yeah, Piers flopped over here. He should have said, after your life ends. So naturally Dawkins jumped at that chance. But when you actually get to the crux of what he said, just because the brain decays, that's it, nothing can happen. But that's a very physicalist, reductionist view of our reality. And that's only one school of thought. Why is he trying to make it out that this is what science preaches? Because that's not what science preaches. Just a basic look into the hard problem of consciousness. This is something that even scientists are contending with and this is a valid form of discussion. It's not just sidelined as quackery, However, consciousness, the spirit, the soul, these are valid topics of discussion. Merely saying, oh, because the brain decays, therefore that's the end. <laughs> that's not very academically rigorous, especially nowadays where people have a lot of access to philosophy and science. Would it be more appropriate to call it the, the, not, the non-immortal gene? The one that's going to stop when the sun burns us up? It would not have been an appropriate title for a chapter. It would be more accurate, no? You were just nitpicking. <laughs> yeah, this was hilarious. So the guy who claims to, you know, be precise and academic and accurate, he called it the immortal gene when he admits that everything is going to come to an end. But immortal means something that doesn't come to an end. And he just, he just parred it aside by saying, Oh, stop it, you! Just, don't, don't do that. <laughs> My lifetime career as a university teacher has been to to instill this idea of of discussion and to um, raise difficult questions, to raise counter counterfactual questions. What would in tutorials? What 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 might it? What might the world look like if so and so mm. were true? How, how would you cope with it if so-and-so were true? Well, this is very interesting. It seems like he's willing to raise difficult questions that are beyond his scope when it comes to things other than science. But when it comes to science, uh, you leave that to us, yeah? We're the ones. Yes, we don't follow common sense, yeah? But hey, we're not supposed to. You're supposed to be okay with that, yeah? Even though science by its nature, like I said, changes. Search up something called paradigm shifts. There have been many paradigm shifts, including in physics. In fact, the person he quotes, Bertrand Russell, is quoted to have once said, we know all there is about physics. Let's move on to something else. But lo and behold, after Newtonian physics came Einsteinian physics. And after Einsteinian physics came quantum mechanics. And all of those three were paradigm shifts. Modern physics is exceedingly mysterious. It really is. I mean, have you tried to read, to read some of the, the difficult modern physics books? It's, it really is very difficult to understand. And intuition doesn't, doesn't do it. You cannot use human intuition. Are physicists not people with agendas? Do they not rely on funding of certain organizations and individuals who want certain outcomes to help line their pockets even further? Are you trying to say that scientists are amoral? Of course not. They have agendas, they have biases, and there's plenty of examples where science has gone wrong because of funding. Doctors were once used to tell us that cigarettes were good for us. Seed oils were promoted as, yes, they're very good for us. Phlogiston and caloric, they were things in science that were wrong, completely wrong, frankly. Is not a good ground, not good grounds for suddenly invoking a supernatural sky daddy. As Muslims, we don't believe that God is a person, nor is God the father or the son of anyone or anything else. We believe Allah is one, he's independent, he does not beget nor is he begotten and there is none like him, as we know from chapter 112 of the Quran. What happened four billion years ago was a, was a spontaneous accidental arising of a molecule which made copies of itself. Again, you're deceiving the people. Nothing in science is certain. What you're doing is using inference. Were you there? Did you observe that happening? 
No, you look at the effects and you infer. This is inference or abduction. Don't pretend like science knows things for certain. It doesn't. Just a little reading of the philosophy of science. In fact, there's a book by Oxford. Yeah, it's a nice little summary of the philosophy of science. I recommend it. And you'll see how these people try to pull the wool over your eyes. Anyways, guys, hope you learned a little bit from this. Atheists really have very little to offer us nowadays. Let's leave it there. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.